Mr President, King Island has always been considered a drought-proof island. Um, it's been extraordinary to visit over there in recent times to see it actually looked like a desert. I didn't believe I could actually see it like it was. It was so dry. It wasn't even brown, it was just grey. It was so dry. You didn't even, I mean, the wallabies obviously are going to stop breeding for a bit, I imagine. Um, they won't for long, I imagine. Um, but it, it was just extraordinary. And the pressure on the farmers who've come back, come off about three good years. Okay, so they'd been invested in their pasture, they'd invested in their businesses, and they'd stocked heavily because they had the pasture on this drought proof island. Well, climate change is changing things, isn't it? Um, but even when the northwest coast, not circular hair, because that was in this stream that missed all the rain, King Island missed all the rain. Um, Wynyard, where, Wynyard East got it in, the, in August, September. King Island got nothing. The tip of circular head got nothing. It's extraordinary to see that weather pattern the way it was and so unusual. So people were a bit caught short um, in that. And then we have the challenge of being an island with a ship that's not fit for purpose, um, struggling to adequately destock in a timely manner. Weather conditions prevail. Thankfully, we had Warren Dip, Dick, and I will commend him, I'll commend him again shortly, on stepping into the void there and really helping to get cattle north. Because when things started drying off in, on the Tasmanian mainland, um, it was no point trying to shift cattle this way as much, because um, abattoirs only got so much capacity, and they were at capacity, they couldn't take any more. So what do you do? So. Mr President, it's been an extraordinary period and I was over there, um, I don't know when it was, not that long ago, um, after they had two mills here, two mills there, another mill there of rain, and it was, it had greened up amazingly how quickly that, I mean, look, drive through the Midlands now, it's green, but I bet you if I went and looked at the grass, there wouldn't be many more than two shoots on a lot of it, okay? <coughs> so the problem there is, um, that whilst it looks green, the green's very superficial. So green shoots on King Island are actually a problem for farmers on King Island. As these cattle, when the cattle, if you allow them onto the paddock to eat the green shoots, they will inevitably get rye, sta rye grass staggers. I don't know if anyone's seen a cow or a, um, you know, a, a you know, cattle with rye grass staggers. It's not a pretty sight. It affects their, their nervous system. They stagger about, obviously, um, and they can die. It can have serious consequences for the animal. So you can't let them back on the paddock until the grass has grown out a bit. Um, it doesn't appear to adversely affect a large number of wallabies, though, sadly. OK, it <laughs> might have been easy if they got the staggers, but don't, they don't appear to. Anyway, um, but the thing is that the wallabies go in there and clean up the new shoots. But the cows can't, the cattle can't. Um, so we've got this little bit of growth. The weather is quickly cooling off, and thus, thus the growth is slow. And anyone who's got a rural, I know the member for Prosser would have plenty of rural areas, member for McIntyre have plenty of rural areas. Um, and she's also got King Island, uh, Flinders Island, obviously. Um, and I was actually talking to people on Flinders Island at times too, and we were trying to you know, get some support for them, for both islands. Um, but it's been extraordinarily difficult. So, Mr President, what we're seeing is the very real impacts of climate change right here in our beautiful state of Tasmania, and it's not good. Um, sadly, some farmers on King Island have lost cattle as they've become bogged in the almost dry dams. They're just going looking for this tiny bit of wall that's left in the middle of this mud puddle and get bogged. And the, the farmers will get, try and get them out but sometimes they'll break their legs. You know, you, it's, farmers know what this is about, and it's tragic. No farmer wants to see a cow or a, you know, a beast die under these circumstances. The other thing that's happened is some of the <coughs> farmers have 
try to let their cattle grow, well, they have with the support of state growers, and I've worked with state growers to try and achieve this, but um, they've been grazing the road verges where, where there's been a bit of feed there. They've been grazing the coastal areas. However, little did they know that there's a toxic plant out there that once the cows ate, they died. So farmers have lost cow, cattle from eating this toxic plant they didn't know would kill them. I've got one farmer over there who rang me, um, well, pretty much in tears, we've been quite concerned about him, who lost $60,000 worth in um, bulls and breeding cattle stock. OK? This is real. It's serious. And it's not over yet. So, um, it's, I, mean, I appreciate the work the government's done in trying to facilitate that, and I have had a very good response from the Department of State Growth in trying to manage some of this, and from the, and the previous minister, when she, when, um, member for Rosefears was the minister. Um, but it, it's, um, it, it also highlights the absolute failure that our shipping service is. I will give credit where credit's due in a moment on that, though, Mr President. There is some credit to be paid, and I will do it. The constant call to destock early on um, had not been easy due to the shipping issues as I've mentioned and the lack of a regular northbound service to, um, and the need to keep breeding cattle on the island. And not only that, we had a lot of pregnant cattle on the island. And you can't ship pregnant cattle at a certain point, they become unshippable in terms of moving them off the island. Okay, and it was interesting talking to the vets over there, the, the strike rate from the um, in the artificial insemination over there was very high, you know? Um, so you've got to have skinny cows, um, can't be shipped, pregnant, and then trying to lactate, OK? We can see the perfect storm here, can't we? So, um, and other cattle, when they become too thin or unwell, like certainly with a cow with a ryegrass stag, you can't ship, OK? So um, there's a... And sadly, I'm aware of some farmers who had to actually shoot their own cattle in the field. And that is the most difficult and heartbreaking thing for any farmer to do. So if anyone doesn't fully appreciate the challenge, they should visit and talk to the farmers themselves. They will tell you. I would particularly like to commend the work of Need for Feed and Lions Australia and Warren Dick from Eastern Line Shipping for the huge amount of time, effort and commitment that's gone into the delivery of hay and stock feed. If anyone has been watching Need for Feed on Facebook, there's been a constant stream of posts. Um, I don't know how many trucks, um, you know, this great convoy of trucks completely loaded with hay and pellets um, from around Victoria going to Port Welshpool to be shipped across by um, Warren Dick. Now, um, some of you might I remember a certain member from McIntyre, remember Les Dick, his father, um, who, uh, the late Les, Les Dick, bit of a character, oh. bit of a rogue, <laughs> a bit rough around the edges, might say. Um, Art was always in the right place. Oh, oh absolutely. And Warren um, is soft around the edges, um, but he's a very good man. And he worked really hard with Need for Feed and Lions Australia to actually facilitate him leaving Bridport completely empty on his ship, okay? A cost of going to Port Welsh full, completely empty, picking up all the hay. 500 bales. They had to leave, yeah, 500. They had to leave a few because they, were they weren't good. But, um, and I've got the number of pellets here, or bags of pellets. Um, and he did that, he offered to do that at his cost. Significant. Now, in recent times, and I did speak to State Growth about this a little while ago, about the need for them to step up into this space a bit, they ha the government have stepped in with $75,000 to assist in that cost of freight. I hope that does go to Mr Dick, because he's the one that's incurred that cost, um, as well as need for feed have incurred costs in tra and transporting the truck freight on the Victorian side, getting all that freight, all that pay and pellets collected and delivered to the port. Okay, there are costs with that because uh, they were originally trying to go to Cape Otterway, um, but that's another story, and I won't go to that one just now. But um, so, they, so then there was a, you know, another um, shipping le uh, freight leg, truck freight leg that needed to occur there. So anyway, um, I do want to commend them. Um, I know the government have been working um, to try to get Colac 
um, and put on a way to be a viable option. There's been some other complications with that, um, which is now tied up in a legal matter, so we won't go near that. Um, but it's, it's these three bodies particularly that have really made this happen. And I do thank the government now for um, stepping up. I'll also acknowledge that Bass Island Line and have been and the local Tasport staff, the King Island Tasport staff, I'm making that distinction, have worked very closely with the members of the community there. They allowed non Steve Dawes and non port people or employees to actually assist in the unloading of that vessel. Uh, they also changed their shipping date for the Bass Island Line to come into Saturday rather than Sunday, their usual day. So I give credit to that too. But it tells me it can be done. So other times when it might need to be done, let's not forget this. Let's not forget it's been done. Because often if um, Eastern, uh, Bass Island Line had been in, um, Eastern Shipping Line or even David Harris with his vessel had to go and stand off either go around to Narra Cooper or stand off and wait and be at, pushed out of port and while Bass Island Line comes in and stays there and unloads and reloads. So, anyway, Mr President, um, I know that um, I'm so glad I wasn't on the Eastern Line shipping vessel on the way across from Port Welshville to King Island because they were punching into three metre swells in 40 knots westerly wind. So I am very pleased. I saw some footage. Very pleased I wasn't on that ship. I would never have got on it in the first place because I don't do ships and sea very much or very well. But I thank um, all the incredible crew of seven on that vessel. Um, so I'm very happy not to be one of them. And I want to thank Warren Dick um, for his commitment to the farmers and the people of King Island, acknowledging they are a very important part of his business. There's no two ways about that. Um, I also want to acknowledge the volunteers um, from Need for Feed and Lions Australia and the various Lions clubs that who provide food and backup and support all the way along this journey. They've done an incredible job. Um, and the people who actually make donations to Need for Feed, because that's how they buy the hay. They don't... And most hay is not donated, it's, they buy it with the money that's donated to them. So I thank them for that. And I also, as I said, I acknowledge the local King Island Tasport staff um, that enabled over 500 bales of hay and 200 one-tonne bags of stock feed pellets to be delivered around the island. And also the King Island Lions Club, who put on a, a massive um, celebration, if you like, of this. Um, we had some pretty broken people on the island pretty distressed farmers, um, you, you know the impact on mental health of these sort of things, and so this was a really big community event. And if you want to, uh, I've got a video that um, Wade Roskin, Roskin from, seven, um, from King Island Radio put, made, he's a musician as well as a radio announcer, if you want me to send you the link to that video that he put together um, with a song, it's fantastic. I'm happy to share it. It's something that will probably be shared wide, far and wide, but it's, it's beautiful. And the whole community came together, and I thank the, mem the Lions Club of King Island for their work. And I go back, and I do reiterate that support the government have now provided $75,000 toward the cost of freight. That's what makes these things make a real difference, and the community is very grateful, and I am very grateful that the, community, that the government have done that for this community.